In the previous section, we talked about architectural decisions. So by now, you should know the difference between models and features, or what do we mean when we talk about local state, global state, and computed state, and how to better just structure your project to scale your application. In this section, we're going to talk about state management. Mainly, we're going to focus on the inconveniences and disadvantages of not having it. We're going to go back into a time where the applications were developed in an MVC architecture. So you can think of this video as a trip to the past in which we'll be seeing the key issues that drove engineers to develop a new architecture. The goal is to come back to the present with some context of why we do stuff the way we do nowadays. In this video, we're going to talk about user events. But first, I want to revisit some concepts. So what's state? State is all the values that the application holds to represent the UI at any point in time. When a user interacts with the application, these interactions get reflected in a state. And what's state management? And what's state management? Originally, front-end applications were so simple that state management wasn't a thing. But when applications start getting more complicated, the need to organize state changes appear. And at that point, state management was born as an architecture that maintains shared application state in a central location popularly known as store. But let's go back to user events. I want to show you a code example where we'll see how user events were handled before state management. In this first page, we have a counter that keeps tracks of goals. It's a scoreboard. So you have two boxes that get updated on click of a button. As you can see in the following code, we have a small score box component that receives the initial score and paints the current score in the DOM every time it gets updated. It's really simple. Now, in this page, we have the same scoreboard than before, but we also have a result box. And in the result box, we can type the result we want and it gets rendered. We have two ways to display the score and two ways to update it. If we go through the code, you can see we have another component that's pretty similar. We receive the initial score and the result is painted every time the score changes. What happens if we want to sync these two? If we want them displaying the same score, as you can see, as you can see, if we click on the score box buttons, the score gets updated in both components. But if I go the other way around, if I say, okay, I actually want the score to be free nil, it's not working. Why? If we go back to the code, you can see that we added a listener to each one of the score boxes. So every time these changes, we update the result. But we don't have a listener that updates the boxes when the result changes, so we need to add it. In this example, we added the missing listener. As you can see here, we're listening to changes in the result component and updating each of the score boxes. Let's test this. So if I go ahead and update this score, guess what, it crashes. This happens also if I update the score boxes. We managed to break the part that was working. This is because there's an update loop. The result component updates the score boxes, which in time update the result, which again updates the two boxes. So in this application, it's clear why it's happening. But in a real application, where you have way more components updating each other, it's really hard to keep track of things. Let's run the last example. Great, now it's working. How, do we, how did we solve this? Well, the best way of solving this is to know the way updates are cascading and avoid loops, but this is very hard. So sometimes what ended up happening was you adding dirty checks to see if the update needs to be done. As you can see in the code, we're checking if the score matches our local state. And if it does, we don't perform the update. As you can see, this approach was very hard to maintain.